Okay, this video is about how to approach a patient. Just some general concepts of when you have a patient and it's not clear exactly what's going on with them. Um, and, and by the way, I'll just say this, you know, most disease in the ballpark, you know, McDougal and um, T. Colin Campbell will tell you 80%, I'll say it's at least 70% of disease is caused by things related to diet. I would actually say one thing I talk about more than those guys do is I'm a little more aware of the different types of toxins, okay? Toxic things either in food or cosmetics, the environment, etc., that also significantly contribute to disease. And one thing too, not to brag, but I can tell you this, I pretty routinely have internal medicine doctors come to me to ask me to help them with their medical problems. They know that I know this stuff better than they do. And the reason is somebody could be the best internal medicine in the world in conventional medicine, but they still don't know. It's not taught in med school or med school res or, in or internal medicine residency, diet and toxicology. So they still don't know these diseases. And that's how I can tell you, I know these diseases better than the people who treat them every day because they've never been trained in diet and toxicology. And they don't even become aware of it as being a realistic option until they've studied it or had some experience with it. And that usually doesn't come till late, perhaps in their 50s, if that ever comes to them at all. And I can tell you, I've got like not even just internal medicine doctors and primary care doctors, the best ones, the ones that all the other internal medicine and primary care doctors say are the best one. They come to me for advice on how to handle internal medicine problems. So I find that kind of funny. And I do the best I can to help them. I like them. And all doctors mean well. It's not their fault they don't get educated in diet and uh, toxicology. And But that's what causes most diseases. Okay, so anyways. First thing, I make this little mnemonic here. I save you, okay? So the first I for ischemia. That's the main problem all over the place, a lack of blood flow. So I joke, you know, TBI can mean traumatic brain injury, but it also means total body ischemia. People get problems everywhere from blindness to strokes, neurologic problems, heart problems, cardiac arrhythmias, just from a lack of blood supply to the organ. So all you have to do is increase blood supply and everything in the body improves. It's pretty simple. Low fat diet, because high fat causes blood sludge, thickened blood, 15, 20% drop in oxygen perfusion in your tissues. Low sodium, because sodium is a vasoconstrictor. 100% vegan. Vegan gives you all the good stuff. Uh, plant foods got all the potassium, magnesium, and increases blood flow. And antioxidants, preventing oxidative stress, minimizing inflammation. Better blood flow, everything works better in the human body. Okay, intestinal. Now, I just list constipation here because constipation sets you down this path of all the different abdominal pressure syndrome uh, things. Of course, we could include leaky gut here, but we'll come to it a little later, but you can remember that. So basically, you eat plant food, you get the fiber, all right? That's where all the fiber is, and <clears throat> that does everything you want with the gut, and it also reduces leaky gut. Okay, and that, that's a lot of things uh, will improve. A lot of intestinal diseases, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. I'm not saying you're going to cure them immediately, but I'll tell you, everything intestinal and abdominal tends to improve. Not everything, but most things, just getting down this path. And that, they should get the fiber from plant food, not, you know, Metamucil or adding on something else. I think that the, getting it from the real plant food is a much better way to go. Okay, idiopathic means that sometimes nobody knows what causes something. Sometimes the cause isn't figured out. And whenever you've got a weird pattern of disease that doesn't seem to make sense, you should definitely consider toxins, toxicology. Okay, of course, we've talked a lot recently about endocrine disrupting chemicals, especially estrogenic chemicals. So you want to minimize those in your diet, you know, F minus in the water, mouthwash and all that, GP and the subsidized food with the subsidized soy, atrazine with the subsidized corn. Uh, so you never want to eat processed food. Processed food is full of toxic things. You should never eat processed food. The only minor exception I would make is single ingredient plain oatmeal with water and single ingredient plain quinoa with water. Those are the only processed food. Other than that, I would never, I don't eat anything with a label on it really. Um, just a single ingredient thing. MSG, MFG, aspartame, you know, arsenic, HG, these are all things that I would try to minimize exposure to. And this HG could be in high fructose corn syrup, etc. Okay, and so by eating an organic only, whole food, plant foods, you avoid most of the stuff. And we talked about other ways to avoid EDCs. You need to get a water filter. I recommend do your laundry with no detergent, etc. That sort of thing. Okay, now stress, stress and immune suppression kind of go together, okay, because stress suppresses the immune system because it elevates cortisol. Also because the catecholamines can function as a siderophore, facilitating iron reaching bacteria and then you're increasing the risk of bacterial infections. Okay, so get your sleep. Sleep deprivation is a stress equivalent. Caffeine, avoid caffeine, it's a stress equivalent. 
You know, corticosteroid medications, you might have to take them, but a lot of times you don't. You've got to figure that out. Stimulants, you know, again, can mimic the acute stress response. All right. So manage your stress, get your exercise. That'll help you to sleep better, you know. Um, not when you're excessively sleep deprived, but as part of your regular routine. Religious people are a lot healthier, so figure out your own uh, values as far as that's concerned. But just be aware they're a lot healthier for many reasons, and it reduces stress. Um, try to go to bed earlier. That's a lot of times what gets people to not sleep enough. They wake up at the same time every day, but they got to go to bed earlier. Um, all right. Uh, so, oh, and another thing about suppression of the immune system. It's kind of funny. Dr. McDougall was talking the other day, and somebody asked him, well, does he think that taking omega-3 supplements will help treat autoimmune disease. And he goes, well, <laughs> it'll help treat it if you want to suppress your immune system, but then you potentially increase the risk of other problems. You suppress your immune system, you potentially increase your risk of uh, cancer, metastatic cancer, of an infections. So what am I trying to say? If you think you might have an autoimmune disease, I would recommend to first try to prevent leaky gut. Because if you prevent leaky gut, that seems to be the most common cause of most autoimmune diseases, you might get better and not have to do anything else. So, you know, dialing up your omega-3s to suppress your immune system is almost like a pharmaceutical approach, and that's going to have other potential side effects. So why not do what has no side effects first and just makes you better in every way and see if that's enough? Then you can reassess. So, you know, I consider autoimmune diseases, this is part of my differential diagnosis algorithm to work up a patient. I'll consider, you know, like weird neurologic symptoms. First thing I think of is ischemia due to lack of blood supply to parts of the brain, overtreatment of hypertension and hypertension equiv overtreatment equivalents, the mouse equivalents. We've gone through that with my Jack Delatory dementia lectures. Um, I, got all, I got lectures on all of this stuff separately and in in, in, I just sort of came up with this because I've been faced with these patients who they're coming to me for personal advice. And by the way, I just do this for free. You know, any of my doctor friends, they know they can come to me and I'll help take care of them for free. It's a little bit of an ego trip for me, I know, when they come to me. And, uh, you know, I do the best I can to help them. Um, so I'll consider, you know, you can get multiple sclerosis with autoimmune, um, an autoimmune disorder that can present with all kinds of vague, waxing and waning neurologic symptoms. But it's most of the time ischemia. MS, compared to ischemia, ischemia is a thousand times more common than MS. I mean, I see plenty of MS, but I see... Tons of ischemic brain problems every day. Okay, uh, other things here. Um, uncoupling, and that goes into the whole my whole lecture on mouse equivalents. Like if you have hypertension and you overtreat it, then you're underperfusing your brain. And a lot of other things we can do that. Atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure. Um, and in a sense, you got almost an equivalent effect from glucose deprivation at night due to excessive use of insulin, hypoxia at night due to um, sleep apnea and all that. So anyways, this mnemonic I say view is a quick way to easily remember a whole bunch of things. When a patient comes to you and you've got a complex problem, you can't figure it out at first, systematically go through each one of these and you'll often get it or you know make some progress with the patient. So anyways, hope that helps.